Hey guys, welcome back to another redstone video. Today I want to show you an updated version of my bee nest and bee farm and also how to build it. So let's go inside of the farm. Have a quick demonstration. The main point of this farm is actually to get bees, so you don't need to bother with breeding them manually. Also get adult bees, which is another advantage. Of course, you also get a couple of bee nest blocks, so if you need those for some kind of a decoration project, it's also an upside of the farm. And yeah, one more thing you get is a lot of stripped birch logs, also some saplings and sticks. Alright, so here's how you can use the farm. You need to get into the minecart, click on the barrel real quick, it starts the process. Then you want to aim yeah, a bit over the middle of the log here, hold down right mouse button and left mouse button. Okay, so we take out those logs. In case a bee nest would degenerate, in one of the three possible locations, you would also take those out. So with the minecart, I'm going left and right. And there could also be one directly in front of the log. So let's see if I'm getting lucky or if I have some case of a showcase effect. If I get a bee nest, it should be around a 5% chance to get one. And there we go, there's the first bee nest. This time we were actually unlucky and a bee immediately got outside of it. But yeah, the farm also takes care of the bees. To go outside, we use a wizard rose actually here in the corner. There's also another reason why we have the wizard rose here in the corner. It enables the bee nest generation in the first place. So if you have any flower within a 5x5 five five and 3 high area of the sapling block, uh, while it grows, then yeah, we have this chance of a bee nest generation. We limit the birch tree to a five high, and then the bee nest can always generate in the same position. So in this case, we would have a chance. Let's use the honey block to indicate it here, there, or in this place. They can't generate generate on the back of it. So the bee nest generation is actually um, directional. They would never generate on the north side of the tree, which is quite convenient since we couldn't easily reach it anyway. Um, and we don't need to you know, take extra measures to prevent the bee nest from generating there. As you've seen in the example, sometimes it happens that the bees would exit the hive immediately. It's actually randomized how long they stay inside of it. And in case you're especially unlucky, you would actually attack the bee and it could uh, attack your back and sting you, so that's why it's also recommended to ha maybe have a regeneration beacon around this farm so it could heal up again. Another reason why you maybe want a regeneration beacon is that you break blocks, which uses up points of the hunger level. Um, so in case your saturation and hunger level is completely filled up to 20, you could break about 32,000 blocks before you would start starving, and this would be yeah, at least more than 10 hours in case of this farm. In most cases, something else would happen first. You would run out durability on your tools. I would recommend to use a diamond or netherite axe that has efficiency 5 and breaking 3, and also silk touch is required to break the bee nest. Additionally, you can also add mending to it, and in case you hook it up to an automatic um, skeleton spawner farm, you could also repair your tool. So one skeleton spawner where you use wolves to kill the skeletons AFK is enough to supply you with enough XP to always have a fully repaired diamond axe or netherite axe. So next I'm going to run this farm for exactly one hour to show you what amount of items you could expect from this farm. So let's check it out. So I was running this for exactly one hour and this is the amount of items we got from it. I'm going to yeah, put it in separate chests so we can sum it up. Alright, so we got about 31 stacks of stripped birch lock. Then, yeah, we almost have 9 stacks of birch saplings and 10 stacks of sticks. Coming from the leaf crushes, of course. And we have 33 bee nests. Okay, now it's just a question how many bees did we get from that. I'm gonna take all of those and place them down and then we can hopefully count the amount of bees somehow. So I placed down all the beehives, put some carpet in front so the bees can't exit them. Now I'm gonna use a fill command, turn the carpet into air, then all the bees should be able to exit the bee nest, but before they can go back, we're gonna kill them for science, just to see how yeah, many we got. Alright, so let's do this. Air. 
all the bees are out and now the is it kill command we killed 81 entities so this farm yeah would supply you with about 80 bees power so here's now a list of all the materials you will need to build this additionally i also used one hopper minecart to collect items that would land on the dispenser all right let's quickly go through it is there anything noteworthy of course it doesn't matter if you use a dark oak wood door or any other door yeah in case you really don't have a wizard rose you could also use a normal flower um then you just need to ignore the beast that escape it's also a possibility if you really don't have the wizard rose all right let's get started so we're going to build this layer by layer first and before we start one important thing the farm is directional because as i mentioned earlier the bee nest generation is directional so we're going to place down one block here it's the first layer and then three blocks like this if you open the f3 menu you have to be facing north if you look at it from this side so now we want to get a couple of repeaters place them down here put them on full delay they point into a block and then we have a torch here in the back two more blocks right there then another repeater facing this way block in front and at the back then we want to go over just some temporary blocks like this and add two more blocks here then three more blocks like this two blocks this way and two blocks that way all right now we can also add two blocks on this side put red some dust on top then we can add another torch here and a block there four tick repeater and a two tick repeater and a block in front then we're going to place redstone dust on all of those blocks and we have blocks at the end now we can also place down a torch here here we can place down another block and another torch then we want to switch over to droppers place three on top of each other and a dispenser facing this way then right here we have a dirt block then we have another dropper here and a second one that points into it so like this okay next we want to place down a block on top of this torch then another block here and there all right uh, now we're gonna have the, the the item output basically on this side okay then we want to connect a couple hoppers to it so five in total this way then three to point into those then another one here there and here pointing this way then those two point in the hoppers here on the side okay and this would be your output and this yeah that's what you hook up to your storage system you could also add a sorting system so you can sort out all the stackable items and um, just filter out the bee nest for example that's kind of up to you next let's get our on off switch barrel put it right here then we want to put an observer in the back of it and it powers this sticky piston here then i want to grab an observer place it down right here we need another sticky piston right there and a redstone block in front okay the next step is we add a sticky piston here observer that faces downwards then here another observer that faces up then we can add an observer facing this way and we have to add a line that points into the dropper here now we need to get a block place it down here there's one here on the side reds and dust below and then we need a note block place it below this block and then we need to add an observer that points into the dropper here you can probably reach it from below yeah that works all right then we want to get some hoppers and place the first one pointing into the dropper here then we can add more to it here in the corner we now need the dirt block if you want you can already place down the wizard row so i do it at the end uh, so i don't get accidentally damaged by it so some creative mode i can easily place it down now okay and we'll connect more hoppers to that 
So it also for the, yeah, the sapling collection. They all feed into this dropper here that supplies the player then. Okay, then yeah, we can also add another piece of redstone dust in the back that points into the dispenser. Next, we're gonna add all the rails. So we need some kind of container block here, like a furnace. And compare it at the front and put one item in, so get a signal. Same on this side. Okay. Then we can add the rails. So two powered rails on both sides. Normal rail. Normal rail here as well. And another powered rail there. And then let's see if we can connect it. I think we have to do it in a certain order. So first those two. Then we can place this one and connect it this way. Now we're going to get another container block, like a barrel or a furnace, place it down here. One item in, then a comparator here, and a repeater. Then here we're going to add two reds and dust. Block, another dust on top. Then we go down a block, place two more blocks here, put dust on top. Here we can also add downwards facing a sticky piston that has an observer in front. Then another sticky piston here, block. And you just place down a repeater and have a normal piston yeah, pointing into this block here. Okay, then we're gonna add a bit of delay. So we need four repeaters, then a block. It's placed on the other piston on this side, pushes the block back afterwards, add just blocks to it, and place down repeater on full delay all the way. It's probably not pretty to use so many repeaters, but it works fine. Okay, now we can add the reliability circuit with the pulse extender. Just gonna add another repeater here, block. So we need seven blocks like this, and then we need either a slab or a glass block right here. Then comparators. Here, redstone dust. Yeah, another block here. Actually, you have to go down. Place down the dust at the bottom there. Um, one on the glass block and torch here on the side. Yeah, then another torch here. Here we're just going to have a sticky piston server in front. Then here we're going to go up a little bit. Add another sticky piston there that yeah, pushes the block in under the observer. Then we just yeah, hook this up to this redstone dust line there. Okay, now we actually have to continue here a little bit. So we need a pair of hoppers that point into each other. Place it like this. Then let's see, I have two blocks here. Two blocks there. More comparators. Blocks, then torches. And here we got the second pair of hoppers that point into each other. Then more comparators and blocks in front. Here we're going to have another torch, and then we need a dropper. Points into another hopper. Then another comparator here, and this one needs to be put on subtract mode. Okay, then we also need to put in one item here into the dropper. Then one item here into the right item hopper. And then five items into this hopper. All right, I'm just gonna place a block above uh, the hopper here and there. So this prevents um, saplings that maybe somehow glitch through falling in there, messing um, yeah, with the system. Okay, next we can place down a couple of blocks to encase the farm. Here we need to keep this one open. And then we can put a row of glazed terracotta on top. Okay, on this side, we also want to keep this one open. Okay, here we need to actually go down a little bit. Place a couple blocks. 
Um, here on top of this block, I actually placed a door. But yeah, it's kind of optional. Okay. Let's fill this up. This is nicely encased. Also glazed terracotta on this side. And there we go. If you want, you can also place down glass blocks here. It seals it off a little bit better. Okay, then we continue with the piston layout. So we need a couple of slime and honey blocks. Place it like this. Here we can use a normal block, a glass block for example, and put logs here. And then a sticky piston pointing into the honey blocks this way. Alright, uh, we can do the same on the other side, just mirrored. And the logs are in a different position. They're on the outside here. Okay, sticky pistons there. Um, next we're gonna just copy everything over and use slime instead of honey. Rest is the same. And yeah, we're gonna do this for five layers in total. So this is layer three, four, and five. Add everything to it and also do it on the other side. So it should look like this. Alright, now the wiring for those pistons. Um, we actually have to replace this block here with a glass block. And here we can go up, place redstone dust on top, and we're going to do the right side first. So we just need a repeater on two ticks, points into a sticky piston, block on top, then here we need a repeater on four ticks, another one on two ticks, dust here, block. Okay, now here we need a repeater on two ticks pointing into this piston. So get up some dust, and now we want to get slabs or glass blocks, and place one here. So here we're gonna place down glazed terracotta. Now we can already do the same on this side. If you want, you can also fill this up already. Well, we have the glazed terracotta already in our hand. Um, yeah, here in the middle we could use glass blocks instead. Okay, let's also actually go over to the other side, and also place down terracotta okay now that is done now we can continue with the wiring okay we just have to place down the repeater every second block and then yeah alternate with the glass blocks like this and at the top we need another block Okay, now we have to basically do the same on the other side. Only difference is that this repeater here is on four ticks. Again, a sticky piston. Four tick repeater, two tick repeater. Lock, red some dust. Then repeater every second block on two ticks. And the glass wiring, or slab wiring. I'm gonna use that instead, right here. Okay, then another block here at the top. We also need to place down a block at the very top in order to limit the tree height. Um, so this needs to be placed down right here. Okay, you can also place two locks below. Then another thing we need to take care of is like the bone meal supply um, for the dispenser, of course. So if we go around to the very bottom again, here we can hook up the bone mill supply. Line of hopper, hoppers for example, and yeah, then use whatever system you prefer. You can just place down a double chest, multiple double chest, shaker box, unloader, um, yeah, whatever you prefer. So there's one more little detail. A lot of items could actually land on top of this dispenser, and you couldn't just place a block on top of it uh, to prevent it, because the, the player would actually mind it. So what I did in order to deal with those items is I placed down some rails like this and put a hopper minecart into the dispenser. So it's still partially on top of this hopper and everything that lands on top will be collected. Okay, the farm is finished now. 
Now we can yeah try to use it for the first time. Recommend to start it up and place the first sapling. Let it grow. Then place down the minecart here. Okay, now we can do yeah a test run. So we're gonna put the stack of birch saplings in our offhand, fill up the rest of the inventory. Okay, let's go in survival mode. Get into the minecart. Then it's really important that if you're efficiency five on your diamond or netherite pickaxe. Unbreaking, of course, is also helpful. You need silk touch to mine the beehives. Um, it's also really helpful if you have manning on it and hook this up to the skeleton spawner or zombie pigment farm. Um, yeah, so your AFK XP source if you want. Otherwise, the diamond axe would last for about 90 minutes and the netherite pickaxe would last for two hours. But yeah, breaking a netherite axe would be quite annoying. <laughs> Anyway, okay, Oops. actually this was the safety because I didn't trigger it for for a minute. So I need to aim at about a bit higher than the middle. So if you could look at the F3 menu, this is about minus 64. Then right and left mouse button. Okay. Yeah, seems like it's working fine. Leaf crushers. Take care of everything. The player always places new saplings. Okay, this is working fine. Hope I would get a beehive right now. Yeah, the chance isn't, isn't too high, only like a 5% chance. Alright, so this was the AFK bee nest and bee farm. It's quite exotic. I don't think a lot of people will actually build this, but in case you need a large honey farm or want a large honey farm, it's definitely one way to get a lot of bees. And of course, if you have stupid goals like getting a double chest of bee nests, this would also help quite a lot. All right. Thanks guys for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.